welcome to the Festival of Storytellers. can't tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement, uh, getting prepared, and I've done a lot of things in my life, but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you. And Reed is magnet, and I thank you, John, for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on us authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I've, I've enjoyed this immensely, Joanne. Ellie, so have I. Thank you for, for who you are, and thank you, Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful, and you've worked so very hard, and we are blessed. We, we are. are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. I'm Gina Venable, and I wrote Closer to Home. And before I tell you a little bit about the book, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Indiana, and I lived in Indiana all my life, and that makes me a lifelong Hoosier. I graduated from Valparaiso University with a master's in applied behavioral science with a concentration in counseling psychology. I worked 34 years in the mental health and substance abuse field. I worked with adolescents and their families and adults in their families for 34 years. And during that time, I heard horror stories and saw life and people at their worst. And I heard stories about experiences that no one should have to experience and no one should have to listen to. I can't change that, but I can write about a world I would like to see. I retired from clinical work and I'm now an American poor service member. For those of you who don't know, AmeriCorps is like the Peace Corps, but only in the United States. We're called the Peace Corps' cousin. I'm placed in a local food bank and I assist with food distribution. I wanted to join AmeriCorps so I could stay connected with the community and continue to help people, just not in a clinical way. I needed, after I retired, I needed peace and harmony in my life. My family was dysfunctional. That's one of the reasons why I went into the field that I did. And the families that I worked with in therapy were dysfunctional. So after I retired, I needed peace and harmony. So I live in a quiet, small Indiana town. And there's a grove of trees behind my house that's a haven for nature and wildlife. And I'm an animal and nature lover. I think all living things are creations of God. And all forms of life should be respected. 
I am also a diehard Cubs fan. You can tell by my bracelet if I can get it up here to the, there we go, Cubs. There it is. My mother was a Cubs fan, and when she passed away, I picked up the torch, and I carry it proudly, especially when they won the 2016 World Series championship. I'm thinking, I'm toying with the idea about, um, about writing a fictional story about the Cubs. I may, I may not. I'm thinking about it, toying with the idea. But even if I don't, go Cubs. I always, especially after, especially after uh, experience all the chaos and the horror stories and all the dysfunction from my family and with the families that I worked with, I wanted to write a book that would inspire people to stop and think about how they treat one another. I don't think people fully understand that our behavior and our actions with one another have an impact, that we all are connected in some way. And how we act and interact with, we, with each other has some kind of an impact on all of us. What we do may lift someone's mood, may make someone's mood worse, and it goes on and on. And I don't think people fully understand that. And I don't think they understand that it can be generational. And what is happening today may be based on what happened generations ago. So I wanted to write a book that would make people stop and think about how they treat one another. So I wrote Closer to Home. And it's about a story about a couple, Kat and Sam, that have endured near fatal accidents. And they are in surgery, hovering somewhere between life and death when the story begins. Now, Kat thinks that she's about to face her final judgment, only to find out that she's been placed in a situation where she has to complete four missions by a mysterious higher power or spend all eternity in limbo. Sam is her partner in this, in this journey, and she meets him a little later in the story. The missions are to reverse four mistakes the higher power can't reverse himself because of his image of perfection. If the missions are completed successfully, the end result will revolutionize politics, social welfare, social and racial justice, and nearly deplete homelessness and juvenile violence. Kate struggles with her faith, and she argues and challenges the higher power. And I wrote this as the higher power. I wrote him as the higher power instead of God because I wanted it to appeal to people who have an issue with God, who have difficulty with God. I wanted it to be a spiritual piece and not a religious piece, and I didn't want it to exclude anyone. Her struggle gets resolved through the course of the story and through her actions and the outcomes. Kat and Sam have to reverse these mistakes using their wits and their free will. They have no special powers. Both Kat and Sam have tragic backstories of abandonment that also get resolved through the course of the story. And they also get to see the end results of their efforts. Now they know the end results through the story. They just don't get to see them until later in the story. And when you read the book, you'll know what I mean by that. Closer to Home is a faith-based science fiction fantasy that I think will appeal to adults and young adults. Kat is the protagonist, and it has an unlikely narrator. So I hope you enjoy Closer to Home, and thank you for your time.
And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to hear them and answer them. I'm waiting. Is there anything you'd like to hear more about? More about the book, more about me, more about my background? Sarah, do you have any questions? Well, I can show you, probably should have done this at the beginning, but I can show you a copy of the book, Closer to Home. Should have done that at the beginning. And here is the back cover. It's available at Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Google Play. So fair goer 657 is a Cubs fan too. Go Cubs. Absolutely. I can still see game seven 
and Chris Bryant catching that last out and the smile on his face and throwing that last out to, to Rizzo and Rizzo catching it. And I'll bet that that base, that first base he was standing on when he caught that last out is worth a lot of money. I'd like to get it. Talk more about the Cubs, please. Oh, okay. Well, Rizzo and Bryant and Javier Baez were my three favorite that were left, and they, they were all traded on the same day, and that broke my heart. And Schwarber was one of my favorites, but he had already been traded. So when he was in the playoffs with the Red Sox, I was hoping he would go to the series and they would win. I didn't want the Dodgers to go, but they went, but they didn't win. And I was glad the Braves won because there was a former Cub. Soler, I think, was a former Cub. So I'm glad they won. But uh, it really broke my heart that day when all three of them were traded on the same day. That just broke my heart. But I was so glad they won and ended that 108-year drought. I remember that night I was texting friends and our hearts were racing and we were texting each other back and forth. And one friend said, I'm going to have to go to the hospital with a heart attack. And I said, don't worry, I'm going to be right behind you. It was what a night. And it was it was all Cubs. I mean, it had everything Cubs in it. It had a rain delay. We were wondering if they were going to win. And OK, this is it. Another lo another loss. And no, they came through. They came through. So. What is my writing style? Well, I don't know that I know how to answer that. The only way I can explain how I wrote Closer to Home is that I had an image in my mind of how I wanted the story to play out. But they were like fragments, just fragments all over. And I couldn't get a sense of how to bring all those pieces together. I knew what I wanted to say, but I didn't quite know how to bring the story together so that it would flow until I thought of the name and until I thought of how I wanted it to end. Then it just seemed like all the pieces came together. So I have a descriptive style. I think I got that from reading Dean Kuntz. I read a lot of Dean Kuntz, and he has a descriptive style. So I, as I was reading him, I thought, well, I can do this. And I read a lot of Stephen King, too. And a lot of his stuff is imaginative. I mean, some people who write science fiction do a lot of research, but his was all imagination. I thought, well, I can do that, too. So I think I kind of put them together. Excuse me, but. Writing Closer to Home, it was just an idea of where I wanted to go. And once I thought of the title, it just kind of moved and came together. Yeah, the Cubs are special to me. I remember I saw, um, I went to one of their games. They were playing the Mets. I can't remember the year, maybe 2005, 2005, I think. And they were playing the Mets. And the Mets got either two or three grand slams in a row. Broke my heart. I had to leave. I couldn't stay to the end of that game. But I take solace in their win of the World Series. So. Where did you get your inspiration in writing Closer to Home? Well, like I said, I wanted to write something that would make people, people stop and think about how they treat one another. And I'm going to give a little bit of the story away. 
one of the missions is to reverse the assassination of President Kennedy. And I always felt a tremendous loss after he was assassinated. He's the first president I remember. And I always thought that had he lived, we'd have a better world. And that was part of the inspiration, just to change the world we have into a better world that I would like to see. And that was part of the inspiration. Cardinals, what can you say about them? Mm. Don't know that I can say that on live. Live broadcast, I don't know. I like their uniforms. I think their uniforms are very pretty. My uh, nephew's ex-wife liked the uh, Cardinals. She's from St. Louis. So she likes them. So I, I, I like their uniforms. That's, that's what I can say about the Cardinals. They are rivals of the Cubs. So that, that's what I can say. Evidently, Fairgoer657 must be a Cardinals fan. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay. In fact, he and uh, my nephew and his fiance, who turned out to be his wife and now ex-wife, had uh, their wedding rehearsal dinner in a restaurant close by Bush Field. And it was the revolving restaurant. And Cardinals were playing that night. They weren't playing the Cubs. But every time we came around and saw Bush Field, there was just a field of red. And it was really pretty to see. I don't know if the Cardinals won that night, but it was really pretty to see. Why is the title closer to home? What does it mean? Oh, that's an excellent question. And I think when you read the book, you'll get the answer. I don't want to give it away. I'm sorry, but I, I don't want to give it away. She says it at the very end. Kat says it at the very end of the book. And you'll see what it means. Mm, that is a very good question. Uh, what does it mean? Okay. Very good question. It does mean something. You're absolutely right. I just can't tell you what it is. I can't give it away. I will say it has something to do with her tragic backstory. I will say that. Oh, you really got my attention. Laugh out loud. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy the book. 
It's got some comedy in it. There's some uh, uh, witty banter back and forth with Cat and Sam. I think you'll enjoy it, but I can't tell you what it means. It'll ruin it for you if you ever read the book. So. Fairgoer657, are you a diehard Cardinals fan? I'm a big fan of fiction books. What makes Closer to Home unique? Well, it's a faith-based science fiction fantasy. What makes it unique is the way they, it's time travel, but what makes it unique is the way they travel through time. Um, they, they visit a part of the afterlife where there, there's a part of the afterlife in my book where everyone, everyone dead and alive have a room. And in that room is stored their life. And any part of their life can be recalled. And you can recall a certain part of a person's life and then go back to that part of that person's life. And of course, the higher power created this. So with that, he propels them back through time. So as far as science fiction goes, that's what makes it unique. That the higher power takes, takes them back through time. It's not... Um, it's not a time machine. It's not uh, uh, scientists working in a lab that figure out a way to open up a wormhole or, or it's not Star Trek or something like that. It's just the higher power getting them back and forth through time. So that's what makes it unique. The fact that the way God or the higher power is displayed in the book is unique. Um, in movies, I haven't seen all the movies where God is portrayed, but in movies where I have seen where God is portrayed, he takes a human form. He does it in my book. I won't tell you the form that he takes. You have to read that to find that out, but it's not a human form. 
Uh, it is a mysterious form, not an evil form, a mysterious form. So that makes it unique. How they, their lives change. Once they meet one another and complete the missions, and this is part of how I'm trying to illustrate how things are connected. Once they meet and complete the missions, then they see how their lives have changed. And their memories have to catch up with them in their new lives. And how that happens is unique. I don't want to give a lot away. I just want to tease you a little bit. <laughs> I hope I've done that. I don't understand the ha ha. I meant when you say that your T. Oh, okay. It's really effective. Okay. All right. I'm doing my job then, I guess. I'm glad you're interested. I think it's a cool story. I think you'd enjoy it, especially if you like fiction books. I think so, too. I'll try to get a... I would appreciate that very much, Fairgoer718. Like I said, I'll show you a co copy of the book again. And it's available at Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Google Play.
We have time for a few more questions. Well, I hear from Sarah that the session is done. So uh, my closing remarks is thank you for your time. I appreciate it and I appreciate your questions. And I hope you buy Closer to Home and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you look forward to the sequel that I'm working on. It is also with Kat and Sam. <clears throat> and it more or less picks up where they left off. And it's another adventure with time travel and correcting mistakes. So uh, thank you. Thank you again for your time. And I appreciate it and have a good day.